When your brothers, sisters, elders, and youngsters, we often say in the journeys of life that it's not the journey that matters, neither is it the, de the destination that matters. What truly matters more than both is who is with us on that journey. What truly matters more than both is who is our companion on the journey. Who's by our side on that journey? Some of the most difficult moments and journeys of life become easy, comfortable because of those who are by our side. Like Abu Bakr anhu being by the side of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of the most challenging moments are able to become comfortable because of the journey men and the journey women that are with us. And sometimes the most enjoyable moments lose flavor. They lose sweetness because the lack of the good company that we pursued to be around us. Similarly, my dear friends, though the journey is what we have in this life, and though the goal is the destination of Jannah, the pathways to paradise, the goal is Jannah. However, how beautiful will Jannah be for an individual if those who he loved in this world are not with him or her? If those relationships that he, and she, he or she cultivated in this world are found not to be present in those beautiful gatherings in, in paradise. And therefore this topic of relationships in Jannah, that it's not just about making it to Jannah, the most beautiful and one of the most attractive blessings of Jannah that Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah speaks about is the fact that the people that we loved will be with us in Jannah as well. When the Prophet was leaving this world, in his last moments of this, of this beautiful life that Allah had gifted him, in the pains of death, and Fatima radiallahu anha walked inside of the room, and she came near the Prophet of Allah, and everyone moved out of, the, out of the way because they understood that this was a moment for only the Prophet and his daughter. And the Prophet informed her and said to her, that was my daughter, and he whispered in her ear, and she began to cry. And a few moments later, he whispers in her ear, and she begins to smile. Later on, Aisha radiallahu anha asks, Fatima radiallahu anha, what was it that the Prophet said to you? And at the start of it, she said, I can't tell you. And later on, she said to her, after being asked over and over, at the first time the Prophet spoke to me, he said to me that I will now be leaving this world because every single year, Jibreel recites the Quran to me once in the month of Ramadan. And in this month of Ramadan, he recited it to me twice. I see that this is because Allah will soon take my life. And it brought her great grief because she is the daughter. And then he said to me, Oh Fatima, don't you worry, don't you grieve. Don't hurt too, don't let, don't let this hurt too much. Don't let the wound deepen too deep. Because you will be the first to be with me after I leave this world. You will be the first from my family to be with me and be my companion in Jannah after I leave from this world. And she smiled. Jannah is only as beautiful as the people that are with us. Ask a mother or a father who's lost a child that their Jannah is very personal. Their goal of Jannah is very unique. That all they wish for is to be able to be re reunited with their own children. Ask those mothers and fathers in Gaza who've lost children and became shaheed. Their goal of this life is to simply earn Jannah so they can be reunited with their children. The Prophet of Allah one day while sitting in the masjid sees a father walking and his father is holding his child with him. And the father and the child are enjoying. The father is holding the child on his shoulders. And the Prophet comes to him and he says to him, Atuhibbu ibnak. Do you love your son? Do you really enjoy spending time with him? And the man responded by saying, Bala, of course, Ya Rasulullah. Who from amongst us does not love our children? And the Prophet, the Prophet of Allah simply smiled. Sometime later, in the Tabrani, this narration comes. And sometime later, the Prophet, who was very observant, and was never passively simply a bystander, he is once again in the masjid, and he sees the same companion come to the masjid, and he sees him in a state of grief, that he looks sad, he looks as if something happened to him, and he looks at the companions around him and he says, did something happen to him? And the companions say that yes, Inna ibnahu qad mat, that his child passed away, his son passed away. The Prophet of Allah 
consoles his companion, comes to him and says to him, that was it the same child that I saw you enjoying and playing with? Was it that same child? And he responds by saying, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And he says to him, oh my companion, would it bring you a sense of ease and comfort if I was to inform you that there will not be a single stage from the stages of the Akhirah that your son will not be standing at saying to Allah that this is my father, let him come with me. Let him be with me. Till the point that he will make sure that you will also enter into Jannah. He will be the source and the cause of you entering into paradise. Relationships in Jannah will be as unique and as enjoyable as the ones in this world that a mother and father will look for that child. So Allah says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا that as the people will be scattered on the day of judgment, as they're about to enter into Jannah, the children will be looking around, the parents will be searching for one another. And this child will be told, Udukhulu, enter, enter. And the child will say, I cannot enter if I don't have my parents with me. How can I enter if my mother isn't with me? How can I enter if my father isn't with me? And he will stand and she will stand there and they will wait and they will say to the angels that we will not move forward until our parents are brought with us. And hence Allah says, سِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا That they will be forced to enter Jannah. In the narration it mentions by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal that as those children are waiting, Allah will tell the angels, bring the parents that are believers and let them also enter into Jannah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانِ Those who believe, and as youngsters, every one of us, we came to this world with our parents, and, and due to our parents. Even if they aren't with us today, they are the cause and the reason for our existence in this world after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And parents experience the greatest sense of joy when that child brings any form of honor to them in this world. Ask a mother how she feels when the child graduates, graduates from even preschool, kindergarten. The mother feels so proud. And like, brother, like, sister, just, it was just preschool. It's not even that special. But the sense of honor is still real. And when that son graduates from high school or that daughter graduates from college, there's a sense of innate pride that a mother or father have because the parents have been honored by their children. My dear parents, imagine the type of honor that Allah will give us and what that experience will be like when our children make us known in the courts of Allah. They make us known in the courts of Allah. They become our voice, which becomes a source of our entrance into Jannah and our elevation into Jannah because they spoke up for us. Allah says in this beautiful verse, that those who believe, their children believed with them. So our responsibility is to make sure that our children also believe, which is the goal of our life as, our, as parents. When, they, when these children enter into Jannah, and they are raised at a certain level, the children will say to Allah, where are our parents? In some narrations they will say, where are, where are our siblings? Where is our spouse? Where are our friends? Where are our family members? And Allah will say to them, or rather the angel will respond to them by saying, they are at a lower level in Jannah than you. They are at a lower level. In one narration they will, it will be said that they are serving their time in Jahannam. And the children will say in response, that how is it possible for us to enjoy the blessings and the bliss of Jannah without our parents being with us? And this is the only time that someone will be able to elevate in the ranks of Jannah. Or else, a person will have to go down to people. In this world, when someone's further ahead in life than us, if someone's in first class, and we're in economy, economy minus, or not even economy plus, and if we want to go see them, we can't. They have to come see us. We can't go to them. They have to step back and come to us. So when those children say to Allah, where are our parents? 
And the response is that they're at a lower level. The natural flow could have been, if you want to be with them, simply go down to them. That's where you should be. Go. You have an open door to descend in your ranks in Jannah. Rather, Allah will say that He will raise الْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ He will raise the ranks of the parents in Jannah. And when the parents will ask, Ya Rabb, where are you taking us? Aina the habtana bina, where are you taking us? And the response will be, Your children have called for you. Your children are seeking your companionship. And the parents and children will be reunited. Ask a father or a mother, a sibling or a loved one that has lost a loved one, that what are they truly looking forward to in Jannah? And they won't be answering by saying palaces. They won't be saying castles. They won't be saying the companionship of the people of Jannah that are not from our family. They will simply say, I'm looking forward to meet my sibling, meet my child, meet my father, meet my mother. And that is the reality of what actually takes place. That when a slave's soul is taken, and when we're removed from this world, and we ascend in the heavens, the first place that we are taken to is a place known as Inna al-abrar al-lafi al-liyin. And when we reach this, this lofty area, the first people who meet us are our own loved ones. And they will come to us and hug us and speak to us. And we will continue having conversations. And the Prophet says in one narration that this will continue until the Day of Judgment. That before they even know it, the time, of, the time in between will come to an end. That is something that we look forward to. And as we look forward to this, and as we pursue this, there will be other relationships that will also be given to us. As we're sitting in Jannah with our family members, with our children, with our friends, Allah says that there will be a conversation that takes place. We'll start speaking to each other. And we'll say, Inna kunna qablu fi ahlina mushfiqeen. There was a time that I actually believed that I won't see you again. I, we struggle to understand for those who have lost loved ones, and the pain is real for those who have lost loved ones who are not Muslims. How do they deal with the sense of loss? Whereas us, I lost my younger brother three years ago in a car accident. And from that moment on, Jannah is simply a place where I believe I will see him again. Everything else becomes secondary. And hence the companions, after the Prophet left this world, Jannah became very personal to them. There was no discussion of rivers of honey and alcohol. There was discussions about, will I be able to be with the Prophet again? One day the Prophet of Allah is speaking about the blessings of Jannah, the rivers of Jannah, the palaces of Jannah. And a companion in the gathering begins to cry. And the Prophet looks at him and says to him, I'm not speaking about Jahannam. I'm speaking about Jannah. What makes you cry? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I understand from your discussion of Jannah that there are levels in Jannah. And you will be at the highest level of Jannah. Maqam al-Mahmudah, al-Firdaus al-A'la. And I don't know where I will be in Jannah. And it brings me great sorrow and grief to even think that when I am in Jannah, you will be somewhere further than me, and I can't be around you. Because the goal is to simply be in your company. The goal is not to enjoy everything else. Companionship makes moments of, moments of happiness truly happy. And the absence of that companionship makes moments of happiness quite dreadful at times. You ask a daughter or a son whose parents have left this world, how did their wedding day go? How was the experience of their wedding day? The happiest day of their life. But the father or mother are not there. It was probably the hardest day of their life. Now imagine being in Jannah, the greatest blessing in being told that your loved ones are not with you. That would be a great challenge. That would be a trial that we're not prepared for. So as the Sahaba saw the Prophet leave, their goal simply became, am I going to be with you in Jannah? Will I be with you? And the Prophet responded by saying, al mar'u ma'a man ahab. That indeed every single person will be with those whom he truly loves. 
we will be with those who we truly love. Bilal anhu is leaving this world, and as he's leaving this world, his wife starts saying, Wa huzana, what a day of grief, what a day of sorrow. And as he gains his consciousness, he looks back at her and says, La taquli hakada, don't say that. Walakin quli wa faraha wa taraba. Say what a day of joy, what a day of happiness. Ghadan nalqa Muhammadan wa hisba. Because tomorrow I will be with the Prophet and my companions. They sought that companionship even for the Akhirah. And if we have lost loved ones, and if we haven't yet, either we will lose someone or we will be the one that is lost. Then either we will be buried or we will be burying someone else. And that is the reality of life. But we believe, the mentality of a believer is that the complete ending of our life is not in this temporal world. And therefore, in أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغْلٍ فَاكِهُونَ That the people of Jannah will be enjoying and they will be busy with their enjoyment. Imam Qurtubi Rahman narrates that فِي شُغْلٍ فَاكِهُونَ refers to the fact that people in Jannah will simply be enjoying the companionship of their family members in Jannah. They'll enjoy being with their children once again. They enjoy being with their parents once again. They will enjoy being with their siblings once again. That is a Jannah that we seek. But in order to reach there, we can only be confident if we lived a life that will also allow us to be with them. Companionship is what allows journeys to be worth it. Jannah is beautiful. But will it truly be beautiful if I'm not with my children? Will it truly be beautiful if I'm not with my parents? And if the answer is the obvious, which is no, then what effort am I making to make it sure, to the best of my ability, that my children will also be with me in Jannah? What effort am I making for those who have already left to make it sure that I will also be with them in Jannah? It wasn't as if that after the Sahabas lost the Prophet, their effort became less, their effort became more, because their earnestness and their yearning to be what the Prophet simply increased. And when people would leave them, they wouldn't say that they have left. They would simply say that they have moved forward. When Umar anhu lost his younger brother, his younger brother's name was Zayd ibn Khattab. And he had a younger brother. Very few people know that he had a younger brother whose name was Zayd, who became Muslim first. In every single battle, Umar anhu would look for his brother Zayd. And he would search for his younger brother. And whenever he would find him, he would embrace him and say, Allah gave us life once again together. And they were extremely close. And in the battle of Yamama, when Zayd became Shaheed, and Umar anhu was informed of this, he rushed to his body, and they saw this great giant for the first time fall and break into pieces. He began to cry. He holds him and wipes his face. And he says to him, Sabaqtani marratain. That you beat me twice. You beat me twice. Their competition was never found to be in mundane things of this world. Their competition was for the greatest objectives. A child competes with Legos. An adult competes for wealth. And those who are even greater compete for other things. But people of Akhirah compete for Akhirah. We can identify the greatness of a person's maturity based upon what they compete for. And these were people who competed for that which truly mattered. That was their goal of life. And he says to him, you beat me twice. Sabaqtani ila al-Islam. You beat me by becoming Muslim first. وَسَبَخْتَنِي إِلَى shahada, And you beat me by becoming shaheed first. And hence he would say, Allahumma, he would, his beautiful dua would be, Allahumma arzuqna shahada fi baladi habibik. Allah grant me martyrdom in the city of your Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so I can also be with them. Because the day that we are raised in the day of judgment, we will be called with those who we truly love. And if we love and associate ourselves to those who are believers, we will be with our siblings, our parents, and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Uthman radiallahu anhu was leaving this world, he, was, he, was, he became shaheed through the swords of the munafiqs and the hypocrites between the time of Asr and Maghrib. 
And as he was in this house arrest for 40 days, as a Khalifa being in house arrest for 40 days, they prevented food, they prevented food coming his way. They prevented people coming into his house. So Naila, his wife, says that as he's reciting the Qur'an, he dozes off and falls asleep. And as he dozes off and falls asleep, she says, I see him as if he is experiencing something very special. And I can tell from his reaction of his face. And he fell asleep crying. And he woke up smiling. So I asked him, how strange. He fell asleep in a, in a sense of grief and he woke up smiling? He says, of course. Because I saw my Habib in my dream. And he came to me and he hugged me. And he said to me, هَلْ مَنَعُوكَ مِنْ طَعَامٍ Did the people of my city prevent you from eating food? That they have put you in a house arrest? And I said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. هَلْ مَنَعُوكَ مِنْ شَرَابٍ Have they prevented you from drinking the water that you purchased from Medina? Because he was the one that financed the wells of Medina. I said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. هَلْ مَنَعُوكَ أَن تُصَلِّيَ فِي مَسْجِدِي هَذَا have they prevented you from praying in the masjid that you financed? He says, Naam Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet of Allah then looks at him and says, Don't you worry. Tonight, sofa tuftiru ma'ana fi hadihi layla. You will break your fast with us tonight. And he woke up smiling, simply knowing that that companionship will be given to him once again. Yawma nadu'u kulla unasin bi imamihim. Allah says, we will call, You will be called upon, and we will be called upon with those who we saw to be our Imams, the people that we looked up to, the people that we saw to be our leaders, and we hope that those leaders are none other than the Sahabas, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we hope that that gathering in Jannah will not be void of the loved ones that we so eagerly seek to be with in this world, because a moment of joy without those whom we love is never a moment of joy. And a moment of hardship, but with the people that we love, it's not, it's not truly hardship, because they're with us. So we can only hope that there is no Jannah without our family. And there is no Jannah without the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah allow us to live a life in which, that if we leave before someone, others will join us from our family. And hence we say, when we enter the graveyard, what do we say to those? You simply left before us, and we will soon join you. Because that is the reality of life, joining them in a place where Allah is pleased with في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر which is the ultimate goal and the ultimate companionship is to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the highest levels of paradise. May Allah make us amongst those people. وَأَخُوتَ عَوَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ